Okay, so let's say you're painting this forest scene and then you go, actually, I want all this to be snapped to a grid. But you've already put it all down and you don't want to go through every single transform and round off the decimals. How can we use Godot to help us here? So one option is that we could make a tree and no matter what we do, it's transform. It just snaps back to position. Another option is we could create a tool up here called snap. And when I hit it, all of my trees snap to a grid. Or if you want to get really fancy, you could make a custom node that has a little palette here. And when you draw, it's just always snapped to a grid. So maybe you're thinking, ah, you must have recompiled the engine to do all that cool stuff, right? I can't do that. Well, you can probably do 90% of this stuff already. It's really simple. It's all actually done in GD script. So for instance, my tree that always stays in place, you can see here, this is the code. It's just in the process loop, I say snap, right? You probably use this function. The little piece of specialness is that I add the tool script up top. That just tells Godot to run this in the editor. Because remember, the Godot editor is a game. All this stuff here is, is scenes and nodes and controls, blah, blah, blah. You already know all this stuff. So Godot is really neat because you can just say, oh yeah, my script, just run it in the editor. So let's go through all these examples and how I did it. Okay, first example, that tree that snaps to a grid. How does that work? Well, we add a tool script to the node. What makes it a tool script is I wrote tool. And then in the process loop, I say your global position is your global position snapped. Super simple stuff. And then here I have this check to say, am I in the editor or not? Because you wouldn't want to do this during runtime. That would be wasteful. And I want to remind you that you're really not limited here. Anything you would do in game, you can do here. So example, if I want to print, let's say, I hit save, you can now see that it's printing Sam. And then when I close the scene, you can see that it stopped printing Sam because that node is no longer in the editor's scene tree. We basically said remove child on it when we close the tab. So having an auto snap is pretty cool, but pretty heavy if you've got a million sprites, right? All running a process loop in the editor. So for the second example, we just have this snap button on the toolbar and it snaps things. How does that work? Well, we don't attach a script to the tree. We attach an auto-loaded script to the editor itself. If I go to project settings, you can see I have my snap plugin enabled here. And we do that by creating a tool class that extends editor plugin. And an editor plugin is just like an auto-load in the editor. So when the editor launches, this plugin will launch and sit there and wait for Godot to talk to it. And what I mean by that is that your editor plugins generally don't have a process loop. Instead, if we go to the documentation here of editor plugin, you can see we have these hooks. For instance, you have a build hook, apply changes hook, an edit hook, you know, yada, yada, yada. So for my snap plugin, I implement just these three hooks, handles, edit, and make visible. Handles gets called every time the user clicks something in the scene tree. It'll pass in the node you just clicked over here. And then Godot is going to ask you, hey, does your editor plugin actually handle this kind of node? Maybe your plugin only works on sprites or something like that. Then if you return true here, it'll then call the edit function, passing in what you just said. Yeah, I do handle. And then you're supposed to store it or something like that because now you're going to play with it. And then lastly, Godot calls this make visible function. So when you click off your node here or whatever, this gets called with false saying, hey, you know, you should hide whatever GUI you have for your plugin. So if I click on, let's say, this entity here, we can see handles entity eight, edit entity eight, make visible true. And then if I click here again, we can see, okay, handles entity seven, make visible false. So why false here? Well, because it's hiding the last snap plugin we had from entity eight and then yada, 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 right? So you get it. And lastly, how do we add this snap button? Well, when we call make visible, you can see we say add snap button. And this is just like you would do in your game or whatever. Just create a button, create a signal for when we press on it. And that's just attached to my simple snap function. And the only strange thing here is that rather than using add child, we have to say add control to container and remove control from container. And how this function works is that you have to pass in an enum to say where you want to add it in the editor. So you can add it whatever up here or on this toolbar here or in the docs or stuff like that. By the way, there's one little thing you have to do for editor plugins to show up in Godot, and that's you have to create a plugin.cfg file and then fill it out like this, where you just say script and then you point it to where the plugin script is. I don't know why they can't just pick it up automatically, but they don't. So moving on to the third example, this one's pretty advanced. We have new things here like a doc. We have resource previews, Godot generated for me. And we also have an undo, redo stack. So let's start with adding a doc. Creating the doc is simple. I just create some sort of control here. I've used a grid container. And then rather than add child, I'm going to say add control to container. And then this enum here says this should be a doc on the right side. And that gives us our thing over here. So to generate the icons for these buttons, we use the resource previewer. This is what Godot uses to generate little icons for all your entities, pack scenes and stuff like that. So you can grab it in an editor plugin like this, and then it has this cool function called Q resource preview. You pass in a path to a resource you have, and then when it's done generating the resource, it calls this callback saying, hey, here's the path of the resource, here's your new icon. And then what I do with it is I just create a button and add it to my grid here. 
and you can see here the icon is pretty crappy. We can fix that by going into the entity, zooming in on it, hitting save, and now it's generated new icons. Okay, then when I click on the button, we have a callback here on button pressed. I store the selected scene in a member variable. And then when I start clicking around on the viewport here, we have this hook, forward canvas GUI input. So we get all our mouse events. And then what we do is we just instance the selected scene and we add it to the edited object here, which is the palette. And the only gotcha is that you have to set the owner correctly. It'll look like it's getting added, but when you save your scene, your new stuff that you painted won't be saved along with it. Okay, lastly, the undo redo stack. I had commented it out there, but let's look at how that works. So in the editor plugin, we say get undo redo. This is an inbuilt Godot thing. It's an undo object and it's not really magic. It just asks you to add stuff to the scene tree in a certain strategy where you have a do method and an undo method. So for me, my do method is just saying, add the selected child to the scene, set its global position to the click event, and then do that owner trick. Then for the undo, I just say, remove the thing. And you can see here's me registering it. It's not really magic, but it's pretty neat that it gets inbuilt into it though. You get to the hit control Z, control shift Z. And the only gotcha here is notice that I don't queue free the node because when I, for instance, undo it, I don't want to queue free it, right? Because I want to be able to add it back in. So what you have to do is add your node when add do reference. And then Godot said in the docs that it'll clean it up somehow. I never actually tested it, but I, I trust the docs. Yeah, so that's editor plugins. They're really, really cool, really, really powerful. But also remember to be careful because if you mess up an editor plugin, Godot normally just crashes. Uh, for example, have you noticed there is a little tree in the top right corner of my Godot because <laughs> I messed something up? Yeah, so just be careful, but also use them because they are great. Hey, and if you like shooting people, yeah, of course you do. And you like games like Hotline Miami and stuff, you should definitely wish this my game space about it. Link is in the description.